Hey, what's going on, guys? I'm Daniel Evans. I'm CEO of Alma Dad. I'm actually sitting here with Nicole, who is the CEO of um, Edison Youth Center. Center. Yes. Um, basically, a youth program, basically here to instruct our youth in different paths they can take, um, creativities, how to actually explore their inner being. You know what I mean? And basically change some of the realities that's in our communities about who we are Absolutely. and basically what we stand for. So I'm here actually here to talk to Nicole about her organization. Um, what it's about and why she felt that this is a good time um, actually to bring this, bring this about, bring it to the world. Okay, so uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, growing up, I was in a performing arts, right? And I come from not so, how do I say, middle class neighborhood. And uh, we had a performing arts that came there and it made like a huge difference in my life. I saw the impact of just going to dance classes, drama classes, and music classes. Anyway, I became, I, I got, I, I had a love for it, so as I got older, I ended up working with uh, children from Head Start, middle school, uh, after school supervisor for enrichment program, and I just, you know, kind of developed a love for it, and I saw the impact that it made on kids, and I just wanted to do the same. Uh, when Corona hit, it was like the perfect time to get this done. Like, I had more time to go do the research and the paperwork and the needs to get, it, the how to get it done, and we did it, and we, you know, so basically, what I hear you saying is basically like COVID is actually gave you the time, you know what I mean, and the energy to actually create this organization. Without COVID, do you think that you you actually be able to create this organization without? without Unfortunately, COVID? no, because I would have been stuck in that cycle: work, get paid, pay the bills, work, get paid. Now I feel like with a little more time, I had the time to relax and just actually pursue it. I've been wanting to do this for so many years, but I just never had the time. Yeah, because I just I just ran across yeah. an article basically was talking about the, the the big resignation that's actually taking place. Like a lot of people leaving their jobs yes. and they're actually looking into new paths. Yes. They actually call it the big shift. Like, what do you think about that? That's actually taking place now. That, that big shift that's actually taking place in I employment. Think a lot of times, like when something bad happens, uh, it happens for a reason, and that's just to birth something else. It's not like. Uh, something something has to fall for something else to rise, mm. if that makes sense. Does that okay. make sense? So with COVID, even though a lot of people died and everything, a lot of thing a lot of things got burned from there. We also got the conversation now with you know Black Lives Matter and a lot of windows and doors open up where we could be seen as an individual and not just you know that black person who wants to do this or mm -hmm. you know it it, it just. Uh, the conversation has been had and it needs to be had due to COVID. It's now amplified. So, uh, yes, a lot of people lost their life in COVID and, you know, that's sad. But it also opened the door for a lot of things good. So would you say, place. would you say, or would you agree or say that this is a good time for renewal of spirit? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Like a phoenix. After the ashes, stuff is going to rise. People are going to rise. And it's a great opportunity. Absolutely. Mm, yes. Cool. It's cool. It's cool. So, um, you dealing with the youths, like, um, what's one of the things you see that they look forward to as far as connecting with you and actually what is it that you do? Uh, surprisingly, kids want to be heard at the end of the day. They might seem like, you know, they don't want to be bothered, but at the end of the day, they want to be heard. And to get them to, you know, open up to you, you have to meet them where they are. For example, what is stuff that they're interested in? They're not just gonna up and tell you what they're interested in. So you come and provide a comfort space where you meet them where they're at. You know what? Let's do a workshop. Let's do a team building mm -hmm. exercise. That will break all the barriers down. When they're having fun, then the door will open up and then you can find out, you know what, what do you wanna do? What do you like? Then we can get to that particular individual. You can't think about certain things if you weren't about, you know, simple stuff like, you know, food, where am I gonna live, where am I gonna sleep and stuff like that. But one thing, the brain cannot focus on two things at the same time. So even if you're hungry or homeless or whatever it is, if you're doing something else, you'll be surprised how your brain will shift from whatever you're thinking about that's making you sad and bring you over to what you're doing right now, which is just playing and having a good time. Yes, the problem's not being solved right away, but at least that stress is not in your body where I'm yeah. thinking about this and I'm happy uh, mm -hmm. or something like that. So it also helps alleviate the stress and also, you know, give you a good space for your mental health. 
perspective. We have a lot of movements. We have a lot of movements right now dealing with um, black communities, different leaders like Eric Adams and um, Lucy Lang and different people that's actually coming out about focus on community, but also focus on the structure of community or prison systems and the laws and stuff like that. Um, do you really think that those type of changes actually are actually going to find our communities? Actually, our children are going to actually benefit from these different leaders that's actually coming to office and these different things they proclaim they're going to do. Will we actually feel the trickle down effect, actually policies and stuff that they're actually bringing about? You know, and where I should actually develop from these new directions. I think if it's done right, absolutely. But it's not going to be overnight. It's going to be a lot of hard work. It's going to be steadfast. It's going to be consistency and just willing to put in the work, the time and energy and not just do, you know what, we're going to do it for this year because, you know, the conversation is being had. It has to be ongoing and it has to be structured and it has to be consistent. Yeah, so I have another question for you as well. Um, so what is one of the goals, they say, of doing this interaction with the children? What do you want the children to take from this experience? How do you want them to develop from this experience? And what would it look like five years from now, or 10 years from now, doing with the children? After they deal with you, what would their lives look like after that? To be honest with you, right now, I'm just giving them perspective. Because life, everyone deals with things or tragedy or whatever on a different level. Hearts, they don't break even. So for example, if you're going through something and you get an opportunity to come to a program, I'm not saying I'm going to eliminate whatever is going on, but it gives you a different perfect, uh, sorry, a perspective that it's not the only thing you're focused on. You ever know that if you're doing something or going through something, if you decide to like be nice or even smiley, but then tell somebody, hey, you know what, have a nice day. You'll find yourself, you know, feeling a little bit better. So I'm just trying to take away a little bit of the stress. Yeah. From day to day stuff that we might go through, or even some trauma we might probably work yeah. through. So just basically, you know, instead of just instead of out here trying to supply people with things, um, you actually supply people with life, with energy. Yes. Like yes. bringing real new energy into the world. Yes. Um, showing them that we are not these bastards that they create in their history books or yes, their absolutely. school books or absolutely. even within their police departments or even their laws. Absolutely. That right now we can generate positive energy and share it with, with one another in the world. And Absolutely. I think this is a really good approach that your organization is taking. Absolutely. And we actually look more forward to a new, you know, springboard organizations that's coming to our community to safeguard our way of life, which is for us to be able to live and to survive on our own terms. Absolutely. So you got any closing remarks before um, we close well, this up? <laughs> we have upcoming activities that's coming up on, um, July 10th, activity in the park three. Uh, you can check us out at edisonyouthcenter.org if you have any questions and uh, just keep. I think that's it. <laughs> Maybe you gotta cut that out. Maybe do that again. <laughs>